Uh, yeah, you can use Jesse. It's not a big deal. Okay. And then Perseus? Yeah. Okay. And I'm fine with my name. You guys can call me Troy. Troy, okay. There, we both have uh, Greek-inspired names, but your, Troy is probably literally your name. It is literally my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and it looks like I am up and going with the stream. Doesn't look like there's any issues. All right. So uh, my channel is extremely small. I have maybe about 30 subscribers. And I doubt anyone's really going to be on at the moment. Especially for me. Yeah, but, uh, it's <clears throat> what, 5 a.m. your time or something, right? No, it's uh, midnight for me, actually. Oh, it's midnight. Yeah. Oh, when, when we stream, it's going to be like really early in the morning for you. Yeah, it'll be 7 o'clock for me. But that's fine because, uh, let's see, it'll be on the 7th for me, which is Monday, I believe. Yeah, the 7th for me, which is a Monday, so I don't have to go to work. Tuesday, I go to work. All right, so, <clears throat> so here's the uh, main topics that... Uh, the mainstream will actually be discussing uh, general game development, uh, how to get started, how to choose what language you want to use, how to choose which game engine to use, what knowledge you need to have, what work is required for whatever project you're working on. Uh, do you have any suggestions to add to that or remove? Uh, well, from my perspective, looking at your list, like I'm going to be good more on the uh, management and design side of things. Um, I have not done much independent game development, and I'm only familiar a little bit with with like Unity, because uh, you know I've always done on the on kind of the professional side of things. So uh, I, I don't know that I can speak very well to things languages, but I think I can speak to you know overall game project management and that sort of stuff. Disney Infinity used a uh, rolled engine. That's correct. Oh, wow. I've heard of Octane. That's used for a multitude of games. Well, no, it was, it was built in-house engine. I thought it was used on multiple games, like a Rage or something. I know I've seen it with a lot of developed problems. developed by Avalanche called. Ah. Um, let's see, obviously choosing languages. Uh, the main languages I have set up is C-sharp, C++, JavaScript, Python, Lua, and Swift. Uh, any languages you would say to add or remove? Well, personally, the only thing I have any experience with is Lua, so uh, I, it's limited to that as far as I can, can really contribute. On the, on the professional side of things, at least experience... 22 years of making games, it's mostly been the C Sharp, C++. Most people use C as the other engines write the scripts for that. Um, but I do know that, you know, for independent game development, the others are used quite extensively and, and they're very valid. Just kind of depends on what you're building, I suppose. Yeah. Oh, just so you're aware, Troy, yes. I've never actually done any kind of professional game development, but I've made mods for like a dozen or so games for about the last 10 years. Sweet. What games have you made mods for? Fallout New Vegas, Civilizations 4, 5, 6, uh, Rim uh, let me think what else off the top of my head. I'm just going to have to look at my Steam list, actually, to give you a good, decent list. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, uh, if you're familiar with the um, Galactic Civilizations series, I've also made mods for every one of those games. Uh, yeah, mostly, those, those are all big games, so. Yeah. And I believe... Else. Most of those oh, use XML. Skyrim modding, but I didn't do the You did mods Fallout games too? Uh, well, Fallout, uh, New Vegas, and um, Skyrim, I guess. I haven't really been doing any for Fallout 4. Oh, fair enough. Uh, let's see. If memory serves with... I know... Uh, Civilization 6, at least, uses both Lua and XML for the data structures. Oh, yes, yes. I, I've also used the uh, the XML, but the Civilizations games, going as far back as I used that. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. The next step would be uh, game idea implementations, uh, which is basically random game mechanics in the mind for that or effects in the game world on you could handle doing that. We can talk in a high level or low level, whichever anyone prefers. To okay, sure. And then there's also uh, paradigms that work well with game development, obviously oriented is definitely one of those big ones right i uh i mean from my perspective for managing something that i think people should be familiar with is a uh, agile development yes which is yeah kind of that technology for helping you to to actually build things that you know that you can ship yeah and one of the things i've been uh learning with uh my mentor uh, senior developer with the uh, indie game company I work with called Cupcoat Gamers. I haven't heard of them, but what do they do? What is... uh, right now, uh, we've done a few mobile games on uh, Android, but we are going to be working on a bigger game once we have a solid idea. Cool. So, so Jesse... Um... Are you developing for the Chinese market? That is my goal. Unfortunately, the Chinese level is rather low, so it's kind of hard to know exactly what the market wants besides MOBAs. I have an interesting idea for a style of game. You're familiar with RTGs like Command and Conquer, uh, Warcraft, yes. Starcraft. Well, what if you make a uh, RTS game that's team-based in a MOBA style? Okay. Uh, sounds like it could be fruitful. Yeah. yeah, Commander 2 actually was like that. If you want to check out uh, its reception, that would probably be useful for you. Where it took it, uh, it took out the base building aspects, or at least the base building aspects, and uh, implemented kind of arena-style maps instead of the more kind of organic looking landscape maps of the first game in the franchise. And the game focuses on uh, powerful command units uh, with, you know, a modest army of uh, support units within that uh, battle arena. See, that's the main kind of one of avoid if I do the game. It's like have it be the organic style, but it's your maybe like 6v6 and the full map and everything heavy base building and i don't think there should actually be any sort of timers unless uh the people use they want to set a timer when condition besides what the other enemy okay so uh yeah what would the MOBA be if you're not using arena style maps though? i'm just curious like would you still be using like a kind of Focused, uh, primary uh, unit? I'm not sure. I really solidified the ideas. Nothing's really set it, in stone. In my experience, uh, usually they eliminate uh, base management aspects of those games. They focus more on micro. And so if you're trying to do both base management and zero abilities, it could push the, uh, the minimum actions per minute the players would need to make above what a lot of people do. Right. I don't really think that would probably be the route I would go. Like I said, I have to really think about it in great detail and plan out every little detail of the game. Let's see. Oh, uh, I'm pretty sure neither of you really know anything about a truth view input, which is a... Uh, it's a uh, game development paradigm that was uh, recently developed. I forget the guy's name, sadly. But he's talked about it in lectures and in theory. Not many uh, devs really use it, so I'm trying to preach it with my channel, with a lot of the stuff I create, and my tutorials. And essentially what it is, is it's a separation of concerns that still follows object or design. And the easiest way you can think 
is MVC, Model View Controller, or MVVM, Model View View, in a game design format with some slight variations. The truth is essentially your game. It is the data form of your entire game, and it can be separated into various uh, truth classes. And the view is obviously what people see. Anything that has to deal with uh, visuals, it goes there. Any code related to that. Input is word, mouse, controller, whatever. Uh, it also includes uh, databases. So the output, it goes there. And one of the best parts about uh, truth view input is that it makes the entire or the data portion 100% testable. So you can do test driven development with the game, which would create uh, bugs that a lot of devs have issues with creating games. Yeah, I'd be interested in, in learning more about that. To me, it sounds like. Um like like we've divided up what we would say you know is the the programming or the code art or the assets and the io or the input and just kind of given them new names but maybe there's you know there's more to the uh to the system than than uh, i see on the surface uh in the actual stream i'll go into it in great detail Over. Sorry about that. I got disconnected. So okay, guys. Uh, so has this been a successful test? And I, I'll talk to you guys on on Sunday. Or do we have anything else we need to do here? Uh, I think the test was fairly successful. I just have to make sure I find the best server to use, which I can do on my own time. I was connected. Yeah, you're to breaking the, up a little bit now to me. Yeah, I switched to a different server, so I'll fix that issue later. Well, yeah, and for the for the uh, like the proper stream, I'm going to make sure I adequate uh, with links on my Twitter and on the various Discord servers I show on to make sure we can boost the audience up. Yeah, I will give you guys the links once we are going live. So we'll probably start like five minutes earlier, so that way we can just set everything up and get all the links that we need sounds great all right well yeah, I've... Just, let me confirm the time so it's my time it's uh sunday i think it's 5 p.m for me right yes 5 and, p.m uh, we, early morning for you right okay it'll be seven o'clock in the morning we, for me and it'll be 7 p.m for me <laughs> okay so you're two hours ahead so you're you're kind of more east coast canada uh, yeah, well, actually, in uh, it, this is uh, like far, fairly far inland for Canada. Our our uh, our East Coast provinces are actually in uh, two and a half hours ahead of where I am. I'm in Ontario, which oh, is like okay. it, which is very far inland. Okay, yeah, where's on, Ontario? Is north of of what in the U.S.? Uh, it is north of is that Chicago uh, or. It's north of Michigan, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Detroit. Uh, yeah, Detroit's in uh, Michigan, Ohio, and New York State. So, okay. mm. yeah, Ontario is a uh, fairly large. It's the largest subnational political division in the world. That's cool. The uh, what is it called? Yeah, it's an okay area, but get this. So you're uh, obviously you're familiar with Anita Sarkis. Museum, but are you also familiar with uh, Stefan Molyneux or Jordan Peterson? Yes, I'm familiar with both those guys. They're all uh, based out of Toronto as well. Like, the city just produced a whole bunch of people who are polarizing. Yeah. I, uh, I find myself uh, liking a lot of Jordan Peterson, but not liking so much of Stefan Molyneux. But I, I you know... I'm not well, sure he's fairly coarse, if you ask me. Yeah, I, I think he's kind of... Um, Kind of, kind of hard for me to watch sometimes when he has call-ins. <laughs> yeah, he's brutal. <laughs> It'd be like, yes, and what's your, and what's your argument? Where's your argument? Where's your, you know? I'm like, let the guy talk. 
<laughs> Let the guy at least say something, please. <laughs> All right. So uh, with the uh, topics, I may do a few additions or subtractions from it. And once I have that solidified, I will send you guys an email letting you know the changes just so you can see them before the stream starts. Sounds good. All right. Okay, so, yeah. So I'll go ahead All and right, start. Go ahead. All right. We will see you on the 6th. I was going to say, uh, I'll talk to you guys. Uh, yes. All right. All right. Bye. Have a great Bye. one. Bye.